Who's ready for a little Cisco brain melt? Cisco has just announced that they are releasing a brand new entry level certification, the Cisco Certified Support Technician. CCST will have two different versions, each oriented towards a different discipline, one in networking and one in security. The networking version is meant to be a stepping stone into the CCNA certification, while the security version is meant to serve as a stepping stone to the Cyber Ops Associate certification. While this can be exciting news for nerds like me, for people who are just entering the IT career field, this can be rather unsettling and they might not know the background behind why these certifications are being implemented. That's why we're going to give a brief history lesson and give you some background as to why these new entry level certifications are necessary or at the very least extremely helpful, answer a lot of the questions you may have surrounding these new certifications, and then finish with a brief look at what will be covered in each of these exams. With all that out of the way, let's get at it. First of all, this is not the first entry-level certification that Cisco has ever released. Back in the day, actually it was only about four or five years ago, Cisco had a entry-level certification that they called the Cisco Certified Entry Network Technician or CSET. CSET covered all of the basic fundamental information that was normally covered by the Cisco Certified Network Associate or CCNA exam. To pass a CSET exam, you needed to know all of the basic language that surrounds computer networking, you had to be familiar with a lot of the protocols out there, but not necessarily necessarily how each of them functions, and you should at least be able to navigate the inter-networking operating system, iOS, and be able to perform basic configurations on Cisco routers and switches. That was about it. It was designed to make sure that you had the basic skills necessary to enter into an entry-level job, whether that's an internship or whether that is as a junior network associate. The Cisco CCNA exam was designed more for people who were already working in the field and had about one to three years of experience under their belts. For people who had already passed a CSET exam, there was actually a shorter, cheaper, and some even argued easier version of the CCNA exam, which only covered the material that was not covered by a CSENT exam. However, all good things must eventually come to an end, and the CSENT was retired, leaving the CCNA exam as the lowest level certification that someone could get in the Cisco certification train, with one exception that we'll mention later. At least with the CSENT exam, students had a fairly decent chance of getting some level of network certification under their belt before they graduated college. However, when that was retired, it became much more difficult for students with no work experience to pad their resumes with certifications like the CCNA, which now became much more difficult as they had to test on a much broader range of certification topics. Additionally, because the CCNA no longer had the CSENT to fall back on, the CCNA exam kind of got nerfed because of all of the theory that the CSENT used to cover now had to take the place of much of the practical skill sets that were also being validated by the CCNA. DNA. Bringing us back to the present day, the CCST appears to be a spiritual successor to the CSENT exam and brings us back to this idea of an entry-level certification that basically just helps you get your foot in the door while the CCNA validates the fact that you have been learning and growing in this entry-level job position that you have found yourself in. It also gives you the benefit of being able to take an entry-level certification exam rather than having to start at the associate level, which can be rather stressful. Will passing CCST be a prerequisite for taking the CCNA exam? At this time, it appears that the answer is no. These are two separate certifications, and while the CCST is being marketed as a stepping stone to CCNA certification, they are not related in any way at this time. The vast majority of information in the CCST is also included in the CCNA exam, and you're able to take that exam without having the CCST beforehand, if that is what you wish. How much will the CCST cost? The CCST exam is actually quite reasonable by Cisco certification standards at $125. This also makes it one of the cheapest IT certification exams in general. So that's kind of a nice bone to throw to your extremely poor college graduates. How long is the CCST exam? You will have 50 minutes to complete the CCST exam. The number of questions in the exam and the score you will need to pass will vary depending on which questions are selected from their test bank when you start in. Some types of questions will require more time to solve and will be worth more 
more points, so it's completely up to random chance what your test is going to look like. What is the relationship between the CCT and CCST certifications? The CCT is actually a fairly obscure certification, but I figured I would throw it in here anyway, just in case you're already familiar with it. The Cisco Certified Technician Exam is not what I would consider a real certification. It's accomplished by throwing a large wad of money at Cisco and then attending a one-day boot camp in order for you to receive a certification at the end. The CCT focuses on individuals who may be subcontracted to client organizations to physically install their hardware for them and perform hardware maintenance, but has absolutely no responsibilities towards the software, performing configuration, and troubleshooting their equipment. The CCT really doesn't cover any of the information on the CCNA exam and therefore is not considered a stepping stone to that cert. The CCT is actually kind of a dead end. There's nowhere to move up from the CCT. The CCST, as we've already pointed out, covers a lot of information that is part of the CCNA exam and does give you kind of a stepping stone to move up so that you're not just stressed out taking the CCNA as your first certification. Cisco does not consider the CCT and CCST as equivalent certifications, and as far as we know, both of these certs will continue to exist in tandem. What are the certification pathways for the CCST? As we mentioned earlier, the CCST comes in two flavors, networking and security. CCST networking is designed to feed directly into the CCNA certification path, which then moves up to the CCMP, CCIE, wonderful acronym hell. The security flavor, on the other hand, is designed to feed into their cyber ops certification train rather than their networking field. So one is very security oriented, the other is very networking oriented. There is overlap in both fields. However, the two exams, as we will get into later, are extremely different at the CCST level. How can I prepare for the CCST? This is perhaps the greatest game changer as far as Cisco certifications have had in several years now. There's no denying Cisco is a money hog. You have to pay a premium for their equipment. You have to pay for the licensing on them. They might even brick your equipment if you let your licensing lapse, Meraki. You have to pay for the right to install software updates. You have to pay for certifications and you have to pay for training just so you know how to use the darn equipment. The point is, it's pretty easy to get fed up with giving Cisco your hard earned money. However, the CCST is the first certification that I've ever seen from Cisco that takes a very different approach. Not only is their CCST exam extremely affordable by IT certification exam standards, but they are even going to offer training for the CCST completely free on their Skills for All and Netacad platforms. The security courses are already live and the networking courses are slated for release at the very specific release date of April 2023. How long is the certification good for? Again, this is extremely rare for Cisco certifications. Cisco certifications usually expire every two to four years, depending on which certifications you get. However, the CCST is a lifetime certification with no expiration date. Now that doesn't mean that you just get to take the CCST and then never have to learn or update your knowledge ever again. However, I can kind of understand their reasoning for this. Nobody should be stuck in an entry level position for their entire career path. You should be constantly moving up and gaining new knowledge as you go. As a result, you should be very quickly replacing your entry level certification with an associate's level, which will then be replaced by a professional level and an expert level and blah, 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 blah fun stuff. So it sort of makes no sense that you should be expected to recertify an entry level certification. Still, it's nice to have a permanent acronym that we can throw onto our resume somewhere and not have to worry about recertification periods, rescheduling exams you've already taken before, and having to revalidate that you still know how to do your job. So with all that fun stuff out of the way, let's go ahead and take a look at what is in each of these CCST exams. All right, the very first thing that we need to take a look at is the first objective field, which is standards and concepts. These are things that you should expect to find on virtually any entry level IT certification, not just networking, but security, general IT, even server stuff. So just about any entry level or even associate level cert should contain this basic information. So this shouldn't be a surprise to anyone. So things like the TCP IP model, the OSI models, the difference between packets and frames, and the difference between layer two 
2 and layer 3 addressing. All very basic stuff. The next thing is the ability to differentiate between bandwidth and throughput, latency, delay, speed test versus iperf. These are also very basic terminology things that any network technician should know. So the ability to identify the difference between all that stuff and being able to define it in your own words. I mean, these are questions that often will pop up on job interviews as well. So it's good to just know this as a general rule. Being able to differentiate between local area networks, wide area networks, metropolitan area networks, campus area networks, personal area networks, and wireless LANs. No surprises here. The ability to tell the difference between common and logical topologies and being able to illustrate and identify them. Great stuff so far. Um, public, private, and hybrid clouds. Your normal cloud infrastructures, software as a service, platform as a service, infrastructure as a service. Remote work versus hybrid work. All once again, very common stuff. The hybrid work models, these are something you don't normally see tested, but it's all basically becoming very commonplace, especially after the time of COVID. So definitely things we want to keep in mind. Describe common network applications and protocols, TCP versus UDP, connection-oriented protocols versus connectionless, various different protocols that you're going to see on a day-to-day -day basis, like file transfer protocol, secure file, trivial file transfer, hypertext transport protocol and its secure version, dynamic host configuration protocol, domain name system, ICMP, NTP, all very common things that you're going to want to know regardless of whether you're going into networking, server maintenance, or just basic help desk stuff. So addressing and subnets, all very important. IP version 4 and IP version 6 are going to be extremely common topics that you're going to be tested on in virtually any certification exam. So you're going to want to know these. I do have a video giving tips and pointers on subnetting. So if you would like to see that, I'll go ahead and link that up here. Endpoints and media types. So things like fiber optic versus copper, twisted pair versus coaxial cable, RJ45 and RJ11 connectors, different styles of fiber optic. Very common things that you're going to see on networking exams and things that are absolutely necessary for your average everyday network technician to know. So being able to differentiate between Wi-Fi, I'm assuming they mean the different standards of Wi-Fi like 802.11n versus AC versus AX, that sort of fun stuff that's normally on networking exams, cellular connections and wired network technologies. So all very good. So copper, including sources of interference, which is good. Fiber, including 802.11, which is the IEEE standard that governs Wi-Fi. I also have a video on IEEE standards, which will also be very helpful for this. Your various frequency bands, cellular sources of interference, all very good. So, so far, I'm actually not seeing anything I disagree with being in an entry level certification. So describing endpoints, we have internet of trash devices. We have computers, mobile devices, IP phones, printers, servers all things you would consider endpoints normally, so I'm happy with that. Demonstrate how to set up and check network connectivity on Windows, Linux, Mac OS, Android, and Apple. I'm fairly surprised to see Android and Apple listed here. Normally, Cisco is very, we'll say, anti-mobile device, so it's actually kind of interesting that they are including Android and Apple iOS in here, but I mean, for anyone from Gen Y or Gen Z, you should be able to fumble through this with your eyes closed, so probably not anything that people are going to get heartburn over. Network utilities on Windows, Linux, Android, and Apple operating systems, how to run troubleshooting commands, wireless settings, SSID, authentication, WPA mode, all very basic networking concepts that you should be able to handle quite easily after passing basically any entry-level computer networking course. This is where it starts to get a bit interesting. So link light color and status, blinking versus solid. This is something that is extremely important and I always tried to instill it in my students, but it was almost never something that you saw on certification exams. Telling the difference between an amber light, a green light, or in more modern Cisco stuff, blue lights. Being able to tell the difference between a light that is just completely off versus one that's completely solid or one that's blinking. These are all very simple troubleshooting things that can really help you out, but almost no one talks about them. So I'm glad that these are being entered into the CCST exam. Being able to use network diagrams in order to attach cables where they're supposed to go, the various types 
types of patch cables, switches and routers, small topologies, power, so things like emergency generators or uninterruptible power supplies, rack layout, how do you actually hook these up so they get the proper airflow? All very important basic things you wanna know. So I'm glad these are also being included now. So various types of ports on your routers, console ports, serial ports, these are getting kind of old, but you are still going to see them. Things like fiber optic ports, ethernet ports, SFPs, which are your fiber optic ports. So all very good stuff. USB ports, I mean, that should be self-explanatory by now. Power over ethernet very important concepts for anyone who's going to be in networking. Basic routing concepts. What is a default gateway? What is the difference between a layer two and a layer three switch? Local networks versus remote networks. Basic terminology, which is often glossed over or taken for granted. And I'm really glad that they are specifically calling out terms like these. And basic switching concepts, MAC address tables, MAC address filtering, and virtual local area networks. All very good stuff and very important for people to know about. Diagnosing problems. So troubleshooting methodologies and help desk best practices. This is something that Cisco has always glossed over. And in my opinion, CompTIA certifications have always done better. So I'm actually kind of surprised to see that on here. And I'm very interested in learning just to what degree and what methodologies and best practices they are including here. Policies and procedures, accurate and complete documentation, incident prioritization. This is all very important skill sets. But in my personal opinion, these these are all very organization specific. Every organization is going to have their own policies and procedures, their own criteria for how you prioritize things, and their own expectations for accurate and complete documentation. However, these are probably going to be very broad and just good things to include no matter where you work. So hopefully they do a good job with that. I'm interested in seeing exactly what their material covers. However, I'm going to have to wait till April to see it just like all the rest of you. Performing packet capture with Wireshark and saving it to a PCAP file. This is a basic skill that just about everyone in IT should have. You're going to be using it a lot more in, say, a cybersecurity focus than just about anything else. However, it is a skill that everyone should know. So purpose of using a packet analyzer and saving and opening a PCAP file, which is basically just a repeat of this, Wireshark is a packet analyzer, run basic diagnostic commands and interpret the results. So ping, IP config, IF config, IP. I'm assuming IP, they're talking about the iOS version of that, which is more of a configuration command than diagnostic in my opinion, but hey, they threw it in there. Um, trace RT for Windows or trace route for just about everyone else. NS lookup, um, recognizing how firewalls can influence the results. So that is a big one right there. And unfortunately, firewalls are almost where everyone points the finger. And it's not always the case, but that's where everyone points the finger first. So as someone who is currently working as a firewall administrator, it's a pain to deal with everyone who claims I'm breaking their stuff. There's my personal whining for the day. Okay, differentiate between different ways to access and collect data. So the difference between the remote desktop protocol, SSH, SSH and Telnet, how do you use them? Okay, I'm not done whining. Telnet, especially among database people, is way overused. People need to stop using it, especially the way database people, they use it for everything. They use it to test their database connections. They use it to test their remote connections to their devices. People need to stop it and proper security procedure should be to always use SSH at the very least. In its own defense, is extremely simple. It's extremely easy. So I get why people still use it, but still it's a giant security risk and at all costs, you should avoid it. All right, moving on. Virtual private networks, terminal emulators, consoles, and network management systems, cloud managed network. So they are once again, pushing Meraki stuff. Meraki at this point has been around for a very long time. They've been very established with Cisco for a long time. Meraki really should have its own certification branch by now, but Cisco really loves to try and market it during their mainline Cisco certifications, which is kind of annoying. And then basic scripting. So that's also good. You can script a lot of stuff with Cisco, but oftentimes they tend to gloss over it. All right, running basic show commands. So all of these show commands, these are extremely important. Um, show switch is really important if you're doing things like switch stacking. Um, show version is 
kind of glossed over a lot, but it's very helpful in a lot of cases. Things like knowing your privilege levels. If you don't know the difference between user exec, privilege exec, and global config, you're probably not going to have the easiest time working with these. And of course, the question mark and the tab button are your best friends. Basic navigation of the iOS is going to be very important for an entry level Cisco certification. I do have some videos on the basic workings of the iOS and initial configuration of Cisco routers and switches. And finally, the sixth section is security. So this is mostly basic terminology. So things like what is a firewall and how does it block depending on whether it's port based or protocol based. You have the CIA triad, you have AAA, we have multi-factor authentication, we have encryption certificates, password complexity, all of this fun stuff, basic security terminology. I don't care who you are. If you don't know what these things are, you probably shouldn't be working in any anything tech related. And then of course, there's basic wireless security on a home router and configuring some form of WPA, whether you're doing WPA one, two, or three, one is old, you shouldn't be using it, two is still fairly old, three should be the standard at this point. My main problem with these is that normally when Cisco's going through labs and doing demos of these during certification exams, they're using facsimiles of old Cisco operating systems on their old home routers, which are just absolute junk. Like they date back to Windows XP days and before. So basic skill you should have, but Cisco's way of testing it is usually very poor in my experience and in my opinion. In my opinion, this is a great exam right off the bat. There's not anything missing that I would consider necessary knowledge for an entry level technician. And they've actually added in a ton of stuff which was missing from the old CSENT exams. So I'm really glad that they have have added these in. I highly recommend if you are looking at getting your first Cisco certification that you look at the CCST networking. Now let's shift gears to the cybersecurity version of the CCST exam. So there's only five basic discipline areas to this exam. So let's go ahead and run through them just like we did with the networking. So with here, we're just going through cybersecurity basics, the CIA triad, the difference between a vulnerability, a threat, and an exploit, the difference between risk and vulnerability, all great terminology things that any cybersecurity person should know, but is often glossed over. So I'm glad that these are being included attack vectors, hardening, defense in depth, all good things, different types of threats to your organization. So malware, ransomware, denial of service attacks, botnets, social engineering, and various forms of social engineering, physical attacks, man in the middles, internet of trash vulnerabilities, advanced persistent threats. This is something that not enough entry level certifications go into. This is where you spend the most of your time talking in cyber security. How do you stop APTs and how do you detect them? So all very good so far. Naturally, you can't have any cybersecurity certification without AAA. We do have RADIUS, although I think it's interesting that Cisco is drawing the line here. They didn't include things like TACAX, which is Cisco invented. Multi-factor authentication, password policies, all good. Different types of encryption, hashing, certificates, PKI, strong versus weak encryption algorithms. So basic network security concepts. So describe TCP protocol vulnerabilities, and they list a whole bunch of protocols, which by default are all unencrypted. Good things to know right there, right off the bat. Um, explain how network addresses impact network security. So things like the difference between flat networks and hierarchical networks, IPv4 versus IPv6. So they're probably going to talk about things like the difference between um, security through obscurity, which is an outdated, but in my opinion, still somewhat useful security security practice, MAC addresses, network segmentation, CIDR notation, NAT, all that fun stuff. So network security architecture, so DMZs, virtualization, clouds versus on-prem, honey pots and honey nets, proxy servers, intrusion detection, and intrusion prevention systems. All good basic entry level stuff that you should know about. How to set up and secure a wireless Soho network, MAC address filtering, encryption standards and protocols, good stuff, access control lists, firewalls, virtual private networks, 
and network access control. All good stuff so far. So endpoint security concepts. So you're going to see a lot of basic endpoint hardening type stuff like Windows Defender, which is their antivirus and host based firewall. So Windows firewall, good stuff like that. How to use their CLI like PowerShell or just Linux commands, file and directory permissions, privilege escalation, all that stuff is very important to cybersecurity. Demonstrate familiarity with appropriate endpoint tools that gather security assessment information. Netstat, NS Lookup, TCP Dump, verify endpoint systems meet security policies and standards. So how do you do an inventory? How do you do a threat assessment? All that fun stuff. Regulatory compliance. So PCI DSS, do you process credit card transactions? HIPAA, do you store health records? GDPR, BYOD, do you allow your employees to bring their own devices and connect them to your network infrastructure? All of these are great things to bring up. So implementation of software and hardware updates. So Windows update, application updates, device drivers, firmware patching, all good things you're going to want to keep in mind. Event viewer is kind of interesting for me that a Cisco certification would actually make you know about Windows logs and how to get into them. Absolutely a necessary cybersecurity skill. I'm just surprised to see Cisco going this vendor agnostic route when Cisco has always been learn our stuff that we make so that we can make more money by making you buy our stuff because that's what we taught you how to use. Anyway, rants about Cisco aside, demonstrate familiarity with malware removal, scanning systems, reviewing scan logs, malware remediation, vulnerability assessment, and risk management. These are huge. How do you determine what your vulnerabilities are and how do you manage your risk? How do you determine how much risk you're willing to take and how do you get rid of those vulnerabilities that you're not willing to accept? So things like your CVEs, your common vulnerabilities and exposures, how do you patch those out? Your patch management, your vulnerability databases, all of this is good stuff. Vulnerability versus risk. How do you rank your risk? How do you determine what is an acceptable risk versus unacceptable? What are the different ways you can deal with it? What are the levels of risk? So all so far is looking good. And then a big one here is disaster recovery plans and business continuity plans. I have a whole video on that as well. Identifying the difference between SIMs and SOARs, which are extremely important. Monitoring network data to identify security incidents. How do you detect whether you've been pwned or not? Digital forensics and attack attribution. Do you use the cyber kill chain? Do you use the MITRE attack matrix? Do you use the diamond model? So tactics, techniques, and procedures, TTP, all very good, decent, not something you normally see in entry level certifications. So I'm glad to see that here. And then once again, we're in compliance framework. So I'm not quite sure why they listed it twice, but once again, we're looking at the GDPR, HIPAA, PCI DSS, FERPA. So that's if you work in education and FISMA, that's if you work for the federal government and reporting and notification requirements. And then policy plan and procedure elements and NIST standards for how do you deal with incident response. So very, very good certification. However, in my personal opinion, this is very endpoint oriented. There is very little network going on. They do have a section that they call network security concepts, but it's almost all just IP addressing. There's very little in the way of how does information actually move around your network? What is the terminology that you need to get into using? A lot of that stuff in the networking exam actually translates directly to cybersecurity. So I'm a little worried about the compartmentalization. This is too security focused, if that makes any amount of sense. You need to have a basic understanding of endpoint systems, but you also need to have an understanding of how they link together and communicate. Because if you don't know how information is being shared, how on earth are you supposed to figure out how people are actually breaking that process and getting in the middle of it? In my personal opinion, this is a great cybersecurity cert, but a lot of these topics are usually found in higher level certifications for a reason. And that reason is you need more basic fundamental knowledge before these can actually start to make sense. But other than that, I mean, everything in here is absolutely useful. I don't exactly think that a entry level security technician is going to be doing a lot of this right off the bat. They're going to be doing a lot of trained monkey work before they get up to the point where a lot of this stuff actually matters to them. 
So what are our key takeaways here? Well, for me, it means that Cisco is sort of acknowledging that there is a purpose and there is a reason for entry level certifications. There is a market for it. There is a demand for it. And there is a need for it as far as the IT industry goes, whether it's networking, cybersecurity, server ops, it doesn't matter. And I think it's kind of them acknowledging that they might have been wrong to get rid of the CSENT exam in the first place. Also, with other vendors improving their training networks and and their certifications that they offer, it's kind of Cisco having to get more competitive to make sure that they stay the top dog. They're dropping the price significantly so that it's more affordable for you to get Cisco rather than the alternatives. And they're also making their training freely available, which is what a lot of other vendors already do. Finally, speaking as someone who has either worked in computer networking or cybersecurity for the past 15 years, five of which were spent teaching computer networking at various institutions of higher learning, the skills validated in these exams are absolutely necessary for technicians working in these fields. While I do feel that the security version is a little bit too compartmentalized for its own good, I absolutely believe that the networking exam is a great entry level exam, and I would demand that skill set from anyone that I'm looking to hire in a computer networking or a cybersecurity job for that matter. I do not feel like the skills and knowledge that are being covered here are too easy or things that we shouldn't even bother validating. A lot of the topics on that exam are actually questions that we ask at my current employer during job interviews. So these are all great skills to have and they provide us some idea of what the basic skill set of a particular applicant is. I'm actually halfway tempted to take the CCST networking exam, even though I'm going to have to start studying for my CCMP recertification here soon. That's going to be fun. But hey, you can never have too many certifications, right? Don't listen to me. My LinkedIn page is an absolute mess. Anyway, I would love to hear your thoughts on the CCST. Is this a certification path that you are interested in pursuing? Are there any things you noticed in the exam that might be missing or anything you think might be a bit advanced for an entry level technician? Let us know in the comments below. Until next time, it's been real. Stay safe and we hope to see you all here later at Brain Melt University.